All right, cool. All right, welcome everybody to the July 20th edition of the Kubernetes Community Call. Um, I'm Doug Davis from IBM, I'm going to be moderating today. Um, this call is being recorded, so be on your best behaviors. Um, let's see, the agenda uh, link is in the chat if you're interested in following there. And let's see, first up on the agenda, I believe we have uh, Liz, who's going to be doing a demo for us today. Great, yeah, okay. Should I take it away now? Yep, please do. Okay, so uh, yeah, my name is Liz Rice. I'm from Aqua Security, and um, I wanted to show a little tool that we've built called Cubebench. Um, so this is an implementation of the, um, scroll to the beginning, the CIS, Center for Internet Security uh, Kubernetes Benchmarks. So the CIS publish a number of um, benchmarks and, and guidance basically to help people with best practices for securing their deployments. And uh, they've published, we're now on the second version of a benchmark for Kubernetes. They, they did one, uh, I guess a couple of months ago, uh, and they've just released an update for um, 1.7 within the last couple of weeks. And uh, this, Benchmark basically, if I find a, a one of the the meat of it, is full of these um, kind of tests um, that allow somebody to kind of verify whether or not they're adhering to the best practices that they advise. So, for example, in this one that I've picked randomly, you'd be looking to see whether um, Cube API server was running, and if it was that it didn't have the basic auth file argument specified. What we've done with Kubebench is automate all these different tests because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, well, there's about 200 pages of document uh, into a, um, a Go application. So uh, before I demonstrate it, I'll just show you quickly that we have these config files um, the tests are divided into tests that you'd run on every node, tests that you'd run on a master, and tests that you'd run on a, a node in a federated deployment. And uh, all of the tests are configured as YAML files, so it's easy to update as the benchmarks get updated and as everything evolves. And uh, then if I move to my Kubernetes node, I should be able to just run this. I'm going to run the, the master tests. Really doesn't take very long at all. We'll see some of them have passed, some of them have failed, got a few warnings. And uh, uh, it essentially, I get some color coded guidance and I also get um, a list of sort of remediations, which is really advice on what to do to comply with the best practices. Um, Another thing that you can do with this is you can have JSON output um, so that it's easier to automate running this across lots of nodes and checking that uh, uh, the results are what you're hoping for. Uh, and uh, I think, is there anything else that I wanted to mention? Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention was um, a lot of the tests rely on checking things like uh, what the permissions are on a particular file or checking what parameters are running on a particular executable. And those file locations and the executable names do uh, seem to vary according to which tool has been used to um, deploy Kubernetes. So uh, if I just look at the config file, uh, we've, we've now got this configurable so you can set up different um, file locations and binary file names. So I think in here we've got, uh, yeah, Hypercube. And um, so we can check for the right um, binaries according to which kind of deployment we've got. And that's pretty much it. It's, it's open source, it's on GitHub. Uh, we'd love feedback. We'd love people to uh, let us know in particular um, if we're kind of missing any file locations or, um, you know, if the configuration is basically wrong, we'd love to hear. Uh, that's pretty much all I was gonna say today. Any questions? Yes, hi, uh, Bob Weiss here from Samsung. Um, I have a question, which is, um, 
Uh, are you planning on? Uh, I'm not sure if you could if you could hear me there. Is, is it just me? Yeah, Bob, you're cutting off for me, but I don't know if it's my connection or yours. Oh, let me try once more. Um, I was asking if you were um, thinking about contributing this to the Kubernetes project itself properly. We'd be absolutely happy to. If there's interest in that, yeah, we'd, we'd totally do that. I don't actually know what the mechanism is for going about that, but, um, but yeah, we'd, we'd be totally happy to do that. Liz, we can talk about that and moving this into the incubator prod or in incubator um, repository set if you're interested. Okay. So that's awesome. Do we have volunteers for uh, sponsors and uh, and champions for this, or reach out to me if you do? Right. Any other questions or comments for Liz? All right, cool. Thank you very much, Liz. That, that looks really cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All right. Moving on to the agenda. Oh, yep. Move next. Uh, next agenda item is uh, release updates. Uh, One point eight. Chase, I believe you're on the call. Yeah. Um, or uh, Caleb can also do this. I put my name in there because I wasn't sure Caleb was going to be here. Uh, but the the quick status is that basically we're trying to finalize the release roles, and there are several open ones, and. We definitely would love to have people um, sign up for those. It's a great opportunity to give back to the community. And there is a link to the spreadsheet in the, the notes. And so if you could just click through there and see if there's something that is interesting to you. If you have more information or, or you want more information about what the role entails or what specific skill sets, um, anybody in the SIG release group can help with that. And you can go to the SIG release channel in Slack or hit the mailing list, which is also linked below uh, in the notes. So the volunteers needed are testing lead, bug tracking, docs, patch manager, which is a Google specific role, and um, a marketing role that is being developed as part of this release. So those things are all really important and necessary for the, the 1.8 release cycle, and we need help. So Caleb, anything you want to add to that? No, I think you uh, covered it all. Okay, great. Um, all right. So the other aspect of this is we're finalizing the release schedule for 1.8 tomorrow. There's a sort of interstitial meeting with SIG release uh, where we're going to talk through the pull request um, that Garrett had for the 1.8 schedule. And we've gotten a lot of good commentary on that. Um, please feel free to uh, add your thoughts to the pull request if there's something that you'd like considered as part of the 1.8 release timeline. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely take that into consideration tomorrow as part of the, the finalization. And again, the, the release, uh, what we're trying to avoid as part of the feedback from the retro is making changes mid-release cycle uh, that, that might be difficult to keep track of. Um, so we're trying to get a lot of this stuff done up front as much as possible. And I think, uh, I'm not sure if Ehor is here, but um, Ehor, do you want to talk to the, about the release timeline? Ehor is here. Great, go for it. Initial a brief update from me. We, as uh, 1.8 train is already coming, and we are currently in a stage where you as a feature owner uh, absolutely welcome to submit your features to the feature server. And don't forget that the deadline is coming. It will happen in two weeks. So please finalize your uh, feature feature proposal before the deadline and submit them to the feature server. That's all for me. I think that's it for the 1.8 release. All right, cool. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments before we move away from 1.8? I will just reiterate uh, Jace's request for volunteers on the release team. For those of you who have, especially for those of you who have lamented that Google staffs this and Google doesn't give transparency and has, has not um, made it easy for uh, people to take these roles, we are trying very hard to, and we are trying to work with you all to make this a broader release team and make it, make it actually a Kubernetes community-led release. So. Um, if you need help making a case to your boss, to your friends, that they should be volunteering for this, that you should be volunteering for this, let me know and I can help. Yep, sounds good. 
Any other questions? All right, moving on then. Uh, 172, looks like they're not, I mean, they're planning on cutting a release today. Um, are there any comments about that? I'm not sure who added that line. Any, anything else to say about that one? I don't think Anthony is able to join us, so I think it's just that there's going to be a release cut. Right. And it looks like 168 has no new news as well. And Anthony's name is sort of next to that one. He's not on, so. Any other comments or questions on that? I was just going to say the uh, the 1.7.2 release is Wojtek has, has been uh, managing that. He's a patch release manager for 1.7. Um, so if you have questions about that, he's a, he's a person to speak to. All right. Cool. The 1.7 branch was frozen due to the COPS test failing in the same way it had failed for 1.7. That should now be fixed. So if you need things cherry picked in the 1.6 and your tests were blocking, you should be able to go retest them. Excellent. All right. Moving on then. Uh, SIG updates. I believe SIG storage is first. Sahid, are you on? Uh, yep. Uh, this is Saad here from the storage SIG. Uh, to give a quick recap of what we worked on in 1.7, uh, there was a new volume plugin that was introduced in Tree, and we had uh, a couple of uh, alpha features go in, one around local storage, uh, which makes available storage local to a particular machine. So far, uh, storage has uh, per persistent storage has uh, been network attached storage. So this is a, a big feature. Uh, and the second feature was around adding capacity isolation uh, around uh, the storage that we take from the machine for things like uh, the overlay for an image, uh, logs, uh, things like that. So both those features. Uh, got started and had some feature, some sub features go in for uh, alpha in the last quarter. Uh, both of them are being worked on uh, as part of the 1.8 release. Uh, another big feature that we're working on is the container storage interface. Uh, we have a big push to get uh, volume plugins out of tree, uh, part of the pluggability and extensibility goals for Kubernetes. Uh, the path for, uh, towards that is the container storage interface. Uh, that's a spec that we're trying to get uh, broader agreement amongst other cluster orchestration systems uh, so that a single volume plugin can work across multiple uh, cluster orchestration systems. Uh, the goal there for this quarter is to come up with an implementation design doc uh, for Kubernetes and maybe some prototyping. Uh, and beyond that, we uh, also aim to uh, expose volumes as block devices. Uh, that's an alpha feature for 1.8. Uh, and uh, we have a spreadsheet that I'll paste in where we track a bunch of other features which are smaller. Um, one big change for 1.8 is that we are no longer accepting any new entry volume plugins. Uh, we are redirecting folks to the existing out of tree flex volume uh, uh, volume drivers. Uh, we understand that there are some sharp edges to using flex volumes. Uh, we're working this quarter to try to, to remove some of those, uh, mainly around uh, the difficulty in deploying a flex volume driver on Kubernetes. Uh, so the advice to people who want to add new volume uh, plugins is to look at flex. Uh, if they want something to go in immediately, uh, if they're willing to wait a couple of quarters, then CSI will be the, the way to do out of tree volume plugins. Any uh, questions? You'll need to clean up my notes. I picked up part way into your thing. So. <laughs> Please clean up yeah, my Thank you, Sarah, for stepping in there. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. No questions, I guess. No, we're just flying through the agenda today. Um, so next is the uh, update from SIG Catalog, which is my section. So we are still inching towards beta. Uh, we're really, really close. Um, the thing we're running into, though, is as we're starting to play with the SIG catalog um, in real environments and looking at additional use cases that are popping up, and as in particular as we do things like use it with other components in Kubernetes, like the um, API aggregation, we're finding that we're running into some design issues that we need to go back and, and, and modify some stuff. Nothing very large, but enough that it's sort of slowing us down. But that's all goodness. It means you know people are actually trying to use this stuff and finding things and, and find it useful. So that's all goodness. Uh, but just some interesting examples of things that we're running into. Um, things like once we turn on the API aggregation, we're finding that we're having resource naming conflicts. Uh, so for example, we had something called binding, but core has something called binding. So 
you know, issues there. We're, um, we need some clarification on how to use secrets for things other than injecting in the pods. So we need to work very closely with the SIG uh, team on that one. And in particular, we, we're doing a little bit of redesigning of our resources to make it a little more flexible because as we're uh, coming up with new use cases, people are going to, um, people are identifying different ways they want to leverage some of the uh, service catalog credentials that are getting injected into the system. And they're, they're using them in ways that we hadn't really thought about and before. And so we need to add some more flexibility. Um, so that's about it in terms of the core project itself. And on a related note though, um, most of the key players in the SIG are also very heavily involved in the Open Service Broker API work group. Um, and so we are obviously feeding our, all of our, uh, our work and feedback on the specification back to the Open Service Broker work group. And so we're making changes to that specification as we go along, um, and that, that seems to be going really, really well. And, as, and the flip side of that is we're also a test bed for the new stuff that's going into the specification itself, because things aren't allowed to go into the spec until at least one platform supports it. So we're, we're turning into one of those platforms. So it's a two-way street here, and it's, and it's really kind of cool to have the spec and the code being done in conjunction, so it's all goodness. But I think that's about it in terms of status. Do, any questions or comments? All right, easy enough. Moving on then down to announcements. Um, Doug, looks like uh, Doug, K -A oh, I'm sorry, yes. Doug, this is Sarah. Before we jump to announcements, maybe we could see if there are any other SIGs, since we have so much time, if there are any other SIGs you might want to report out or have a thing that they would like to discuss or we're just gonna call it summertime, okay. <laughs> it's a very quiet group today. <laughs> All right, so announcements, uh, just one on there is SIG Summertime, there you go. Um, so k8s.reviews is live. Um, very hard to read with all those little cursors in there, but I think that's the right URL. Um, go, go take a look at it when you can. Every time I go look at it, I keep reminding myself I gotta come back here more often. It's really, really useful for keeping track of all your PRs that are spread out across the various components and see the status of them. Uh, it's really kind of neat. Uh, any questions or comments on that? Thank you to right. George and Jace for figuring out how to do that, or I'm not sure who did it, but somebody did, and that was awesome. Thank you. Yes, very much so. All right, well, technically we're at the, at the end of the agenda, but are there any other topics or discussion points people would like to bring up since we have a oodles amount of time? All right, I guess we're done for the day then. Thank you all for joining. Thanks. Happy Thursday, the world's shortest uh, Kubernetes community meeting. There you go. I have a quick question. Right. Oh, yeah. That somebody could just answer for me. Um, who would be in charge of official expiration policy on Kubernetes, um, on the Kubernetes versions? I've been trolling the SIGs trying to find out a SIG that's willing for this, and nobody seems to. Oh, yeah, sorry, I have too many meetings. Um, yeah, I wrote the existing policy. What specific issue do you have? The specific issue is that I can't find anywhere we publish that policy. We have a de facto policy and I can't actually find it online anywhere. Uh, uh, we responded to your question in the SIG cluster and for what it's worth, Josh, but I think that Robert Bailey and myself both agreed that this is a, a thing that crosses multiple SIGs and is worth raising to the governance board uh, okay. in that because it's unclear which SIG should actually own this. But we all collectively agree the doc is buried deep inside of the Kubernetes community repo in a directory called design proposals. It's weird that we keep having to refer to that as our supported official policy. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, versioning.md. Josh, did okay. you versioning.md somewhere in uh, Kubernetes community proposals, design proposals. Contributors design proposals, <laughs> versioning.md. I, I can't imagine why I didn't find it. Not, not obvious, which may be why you didn't find it, yes, but <laughs> there is a policy. Yeah, I, I know there's a policy, just somebody hit, a packager hit me up from a platform and they were like, what's the actual policy on this? And I was like, oh, well, it's this. And they're like, do you have a doc on that? And I'm like, I'm sure one exists. <laughs> I just dropped it in the chat for you. Yeah. 
Well, okay. I, I just copied Brian's note to me to drop into the chat for you. So okay. ignore the Brian Grant parts. Okay, thanks. All right, any other questions or topics for discussion? Um, All right. But, but uh, yeah, just uh, one, one last point about this is currently the release SIG owns uh, has positions for all of the uh, branch managers and things. So the, the current support definition says we support three releases. The structure of the positions and the teams in SIG release are uh, based on that. So you can't change the official uh, number of supported versions without adding new positions, which again, you know, we'll need to find people to fill at minimum. There are other issues too, like version skew and things like that. But yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right, I think we're done. 40 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. And thank you, Liz, uh -huh. for your demo. Right.